Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a video all about Universal Studios and tips when traveling to specifically Universal Orlando. This has been two years since my last video with Universal Tips. I thought I would make a new one just to do a refresher and to talk about some different things. So I am going to be giving you guys my top 10 tips when traveling to Universal Studios Orlando. Okay, so my first tip for when getting ready to travel to Universal is to pack light. Depending on when you're going, the weather is going to be different. Usually in Orlando, the weather's crazy. You know, it's usually really hot, but sometimes even when it's really hot, it rains a lot and the weather's just kind of all over the place. But with that, whatever you're bringing, whatever season you're going, try to pack as light as possible because if you are like me, you're probably gonna be doing a lot of shopping when you're there and you're gonna wanna bring a lot of stuff home. My next tip is for kind of like when you're planning, I do recommend staying at an on-site hotel at Universal. So when I originally started planning trips to go there, I always thought that the on-site hotels would be a lot more expensive than if we just stayed at some random like Best Western or something like that. And it turns out that that's not necessarily the case. A lot of their hotels have very, very good prices. They have high-end hotels and then they have cheaper hotels. So you can definitely, like there's a huge range of different on-site hotels. You can stay at one of like the really nice ones that is very pricey, like the Hard Rock, or you can stay at one of the cheaper ones. I know they just opened like two new hotels this past year. And honestly, the price difference is so much worth it to stay at an on-site because of the perks that you get when you stay at one of those hotels. So when I book all of our stuff, I usually do it on the Universal website and I do their vacation packages because it will book you a hotel, it'll get your park tickets. If you book through them, you get the early park admissions, which I highly, highly recommend is to get their early park admissions with your ticket. And also you will get breakfast at either the Three Broomsticks or the Leaky Cauldron. So that is pretty cool. So you can get a morning breakfast ex experience and so you'll get like a reservation to eat at the Three Broomsticks or the Leaky Cauldron versus going there and waiting in line because the line sometimes can be super long in the morning. That all comes with booking with a vacation package on the Universal Studios website. So I do recommend that. I'll leave that link for that down below if you are interested in booking one. So like I was saying, the early park admissions comes with booking online on the Universal website if you do a vacation package because you get to go into the park an hour early before it opens to the rest of the public. Going that hour early is so worth it, especially to get on the rides because the lines can get very long. It, especially if you're going during a weekend or during the summer, anytime that school's out, the lines are going to be probably ridiculous. So getting there early, trying to hit all the rides first is what I recommend. You can get on, I think every ride, I'm not sure about the new Hagrid ride because I know that that one is a little bit different. They open at different times and everything because it's been so busy. So I'm not sure if that one is included with the early park admissions right now but to get on to like the Hogwarts ride and everything, it's very much worth it. Also, if you're someone that likes to take pictures like I do when I go, it's nice to be able to take pictures first thing in the morning when there's not a lot of people there because that's how you're gonna get those really nice shots with not a ton of people behind you. And then if you're like kind of nervous and weird about taking pictures in front of people, it will be nice because you can pose and do all your crazy things, whatever you want to do, and there won't be a ton of people staring at you thinking that you're crazy. If you are going to Universal Studios Orlando, I highly, highly recommend downloading the Universal Studios app. That is one of the first things that I did when I went with, when they like came out with it. And the first time I went, I don't even think they had an app. It wasn't really popular back then, but now it's something that I very much recommend. First of all, it's an entire map of the park. So you can have an understanding of where you are if you're lost and you don't have to carry around one of those paper maps. And also you can see all the wait times. So that's really nice. You can plan out what rides you want to go on based on looking at the app. 
There's also new features on the app which I think are amazing and one of them is the wallet feature so you can actually have your credit card information on your phone. There is a budget spending little tab so you can limit yourself to a certain amount a day which I do recommend whether you're using the app or not. We typically go into the park with $100 a day to spend and there is a new feature. I don't know how new it is but I just saw it and you can scan your park ticket information so that it's on your phone because one of the annoying things that i've always thought when going to universal is first of all you have to get a two park pass to be at universal or island of adventures they're not one park so you need to have a two park pass and so when you want to get onto the hogwarts express to go from say hogsmeade to diagon alley you have to show them your ticket and so it can be kind of annoying if you have to like dig through your backpack or your purse whatever and find your ticket every time you want to go back and forth so i do think it's really nice now that you can scan your ticket on the app and just have it on your phone so i think that should be able to work when you're asked to show your ticket you can just show them with your phone since we all have phones on us at all times so i think that is really awesome one of the other features on the app is being able to order food so there is certain restaurants that are listed in the app that you can order food online and then just go in and pick it up so you don't have to wait in the long lines to get food so there's a lot of perks to downloading the universal studios app and i think it's amazing i'm literally on it like 24 7 while we're there because i'm always looking at ride times and like where we should be going and everything and i think it's very very useful when you are getting ready to go into universal studios along with having your phone and the app already downloaded and ready to go i suggest bringing a backpack i did film a video months ago about what I bring in my park backpack. I'll link that up here so you guys can watch that. But always go to the park with a backpack instead of like a purse or something uncomfortable to carry. Bring a backpack. It's going to be a lot more comfortable. You can fit a lot more stuff in it. Not a super big one like, you know, this big. Not crazy big because it has to be able to fit into lockers. I think you can get bigger lockers but i think you might have to pay for them bring a smaller backpack so you don't have to pay for the locker and with your backpack you can bring water and snacks into the park so because water is like seven dollars for a water bottle there i do recommend bringing your own water bottle you can refill it there's stations to fill your water and also bring some snacks like some bars or just like little nut things to snack on in the park when you're starving because food is also extremely expensive so save that for like when you're actually going to get a meal and then bring your own snacks one of the things that i think everyone should do is try everything when you are in the park i would hate to go and then not know when you're going to come back because a lot of people don't get to travel all the time to universal studios it's an expensive vacation and so when you go and this is your one chance to go try everything try all the different types of butter beers try a bunch of different types of candy from honey dukes and just do everything you can to get all of the experience in your one trip because you don't want to come back home and be like darn i didn't get to try the frozen butter beer because honestly that's like the best besides the warm one but that's only seasonal so i just recommend trying everything go and get the ice cream get the pumpkin juice get everything you can so that when you come home you can feel like you tried everything and you got to experience everything in the wizarding world one of the things that me and jonathan agreed on is such a good tip and we live by this whenever we travel is to not over plan and to go with the flow so we're the kind of people that kind of just like go into the park with no expectations or plans on what we're going to do that day we really just like to go with the flow so if this ride's open and the wait is really short we'll go on that if you know if this one's too long then we'll wait we'll come back later we'll do stuff like that because if your expectations are really high on everything you're going to do i feel like you're going to be disappointed and also you're going to miss out on all the little things there's so many things to take in when you're going into the wizarding world with like details of the buildings and the shops and just everything that it's easy to miss if you are on a crazy schedule that is telling you like you need to be here 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 and here so take it all in walk around the park enjoy everything even if the wait times are super long for the rides like there's so much to look at when you are waiting in line for the rides because of the way that they designed their queues that it's not that bad when you're waiting in line unless you're waiting in line like a thousand degree weather then yes it's miserable i don't recommend with that we also 
very much recommend taking breaks. If you're anything like me and you get anxiety or anxious when you're around big crowds of people, it's nice to have a place to go that's quiet for the most part and just kind of more secluded than just right in the middle of the park. I get really overwhelmed with a lot of crowds and in lines. I get really anxious when I'm waiting in lines as well for rides. So we like to take a lot of breaks and our favorite place to go to is the Hogshead Pub. One, because they have beer there and we just like to sit down and have a beer. But two, it's just like this nice little, a lot of times it is kind of quiet in there, which is so weird, but it's just like this nice darker, area that we can just sit and have a drink and just relax for a minute and even the outside patio area where you can eat and you have like a view of hogwarts and everything like that area is really nice too and it doesn't get super crowded depending on when you're going but it doesn't get super overcrowded and it's a nice place to take a break i know that there's also a really nice place to hang out and that is in nocturne alley so if you're in diagon alley you go to nocturne alley which is right down the little street and it's super dark in there. It's like completely black. And if you just like need to take a break, sit down and just get away from the crowd, I recommend going there as well. Next tip is to dress for the occasion. So as cute as you may want to look going into the wizarding world, my number one tip with clothing is to wear comfortable shoes. You're probably gonna be on your feet for over 12 hours, walking around, standing in line, just everything. Wear comfortable shoes that you know are gonna get you through the day. Don't go into the park with any like new shoes that you haven't worn and your feet are gonna be killing you. Right? And same with clothing. A lot of times you end up going on water rides and things at Universal. There's nothing water related with Harry Potter, but if you, you know, obviously you're gonna venture out of the wizarding world. Once you go out there and you wanna go on water rides because it's really hot, wear something that you know can get wet. If you're wearing jeans, it's not gonna be comfortable walking around in wet jeans all day. So just think about those kind of things when you're going to be going into the park. Like, am I gonna be going on a water ride today? How long are we gonna be here? Am I gonna be walking for a really long time? My last tip is when purchasing merchandise. Personally, I go in with a certain amount of money for um, each day. The last day is when I do all my shopping. I recommend waiting till the last day to do all your shopping so you have time to look at all the stores and really figure out what is gonna be most important to you to purchase. So it's nice to go in, look at everything, and then really think, hmm, what do I really want? I recommend when buying things, is to buy things that you can only get there. They do sell things that you can get at like Noble Collection or um, even like Amazon stuff. They do sell stuff like that in the park. I don't recommend buying that kind of stuff in the park because you can buy it any other day. The kind of things you wanna buy when you're there are things that you can't find anywhere else. And that's like the robes. I did a whole video on my robes. I'll link it up here for you guys if you wanna watch that if you haven't already. And I 100% recommend getting your Hogwarts robes, scarf, and tie. They don't sell the authentic ones anywhere else besides Universal. So I think that's always a great purchase. And then things like interactive wands. You can't get those anywhere else. I would recommend buying those. And just things like that. If you've seen it before online or from another store, don't buy it. Buy exclusive Universal Studios merchandise when you're there since you never know if you're gonna go back or when you're gonna go back. Also with buying stuff, if you are going to be purchasing uh, any of these items, like I said, I recommend buying them on the last day, but also I think it's always smart to purchase things before you're gonna be leaving the park that day because you don't wanna be walking around the park with bags and then you have to fit those bags into lockers every time you wanna go on a ride as well. So get all your fun stuff done in the day and then when you know you're gonna be leaving soon, that's when you wanna go shopping so that you can just leave with your bags. I know if you are at an on-site hotel as well, you can have them send your stuff to the hotel. So if you buy a robe, you can leave it with them and they'll send it to your hotel, which is another perk of staying at an on-site hotel. So that is one of the things that is really cool. But just in case you're not, buy stuff before you're gonna leave. So you don't have to walk around with it all day. The only thing you're probably gonna wanna buy right when you get there, depending on if you want to do the interactive stuff, is probably a wand. Cause then you can walk around with your interactive wand and do the magic and everything. And I'm pretty positive the wands fit in the lockers. 
I think they're deep enough. I mean, it wouldn't make sense if they're not, honestly. That'd be pretty dumb. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully, if you're planning a trip to Universal, this helped a little bit when planning. If you have any questions about Universal, I can try to answer them for you guys. I don't live in Orlando. I live in California, and we always like to go to the one in Orlando though and we've been multiple times so I don't know all the information I know I get a lot of questions that people ask me about things about like prices and things like that I don't know everything but I can try to answer your questions in the comments below thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next week with a new video